Hi, I'm Tam. And I'm Eternally Mortal. And this is the Hidden Egg Podcast, where we talk about vulnerability. And stuff and things. And this week we're on a voice channel instead of the uh, typical stage channel so that we can have little sound bite things. I didn't have that practiced in my head. <laughs> That's okay. Some, uh, something like this, which, oh, you know, I'll do this one because... Oh. Oh. Yep, ah, sound bits. The other one is literally something you say, so I, the first time I heard you use it, I thought you were actually just saying. I don't know. But <laughs> that's a sound bite. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Uh, did you have, was there more to the intro? intro? Or are we, are we, um, we good with the intro? I, I've been trying to remember to say that you're listening to Season 5, Episode 4? Four. four. Is that the fourth one? Uh -huh. And today's four. theme is the presidential immunity ruling by that's, the supreme court that's fine. of the united states nope ben's gonna no problem leave. ben we'll, we'll see, check you when you get back we'll see you when you get back and then when you get back at some some distant future we'll we'll have a, a sound bite for you yeah uh-huh <laughs> uh, i feel bad for not uploading that already i feel oh, like it's i okay. should do that but i'm not going to We'll get around to it, you know? We're taking our time and doing our thing, and it's been going great, so... Yeah. But today, we're going to get deep. The uh, Supreme Court of the United States just recently made a ruling, I think it was 6-3, to three, basically giving the President of the United States immunity in uh, criminal cases against him when it has to do with presidential function. Yeah, with so official, normally, official normally we do shout-outs. Oh, yeah, I was just sure. basically... Sam, what the episode was about. I'm sorry, but you can do shout outs. Yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> before we get into that, um, so I wanted to shout out Len Vidson's article. I know it's from May, but like it was really, really good. Like really, really good. So oh, good that I had, I had to like share it everywhere because I don't think that, I don't think that anybody finds Len. I think that Len has been criminally undervalued, much like Sturge, but maybe even worse. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say that, but but Sturge actually got Len's story boosted so that it can be spread even further. So Heck yeah, super Sturge. happy well about done. that. Thank you. And and whoever at Medium that made the final decision, because Sturge just, just dominates, right? So... Somebody made the final decision on it, and right. we appreciate them too. Yeah, and I don't want to—I don't want to say what the story is about because it—it it, kind of builds on everything that it that it, that's been said. But the name of the story is "The Wind Seed," subtitled "The Key to the Whole Universe," and it was just—it was a really amazing story and left me feeling really good afterwards. Yeah, it was delightful. I really enjoyed it a lot. It was so good. And then we have. My Chubby Little Legs by Elena Tucker or Elena Tucker. I'm not sure how her first name is read. Could be either one. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just how it sounds. Her, She's talking about her chubby little legs. And it's a little piece of body positivity that I felt like I needed to read. Because I'm in a, a similar boat with how I don't really enjoy the rest of my body but there are some parts of my body that I do appreciate and it showed me like I don't know I just like watching other people find things that they enjoy and love about their their body parts even if they're not perfect yeah absolutely I think that currently in our society there's it's really difficult for people to find self-love a lot of times and sometimes you got to take self-love one step at a time or one aspect at a time and celebrating any aspects of self-love that's wonderful so the other two shout outs are a little bit more on point with our theme mm -hmm. the next one is it was just published like just hours ago by ben ulancey the discord among democrats is only natural and makes me proud to vote blue subtitled the division among democrats is a challenge to overcome but speaks to the persevering integrity of the political party mouthful but awesome yes i don't think i read this one no it just came out you didn't have time to read it but one of the things that he says in there 
um, he actually brought up the same thing that you and I had talked about yesterday or maybe day before that um, that debate from Gallipanakis with what was his name? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. The interview. You're the, oh, okay, you're talking about George Stephanopoulos? Yes, George Stephanopoulos. Yeah. I am terrible with names. Please forgive me. So, um, and, and he had the same, you know, he picked out that same part that was like, you know, if you don't win, how are you going to feel? And, you know, the quote of, you know, it's just about doing the best I can. And that's what it's really about. And like, Ben had yeah. that same response that we did. It was like, no, no, that's not what this is about. That is not what any of this is about. <laughs> yeah, I it it drove me nuts, honestly, to hear him say that. Um, I, I should have expected that Ben would be on the same page about it, honestly. Thank you, thank you, Serge. We appreciate that. And uh, yeah, George uh, Stephan Elephantitis, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephanopoulos, Stephan Elephantitis, either one, really. But I mean, he he goes into more than just that interview. It's it's just all down the line. Just pretty much everything that we've said, in one way or another, just kind of like condensed into one place. In I just felt that it was a masterful way, and so I just wanted to shout out to it. It's not specifically the on the topic that we were going to discuss, but it's it's kind of a tangential, right? Thing because. Because of the decision, the election is now very, very forefront in a lot of people's minds. And so yeah. they become very, very interconnectedly related. Yeah, it's very um, heavily related. So. I feel like I'm coming in a little bit little bit late staying this, but um, I don't know if anybody's watching the video, but there's a lot of tabs up there. And I just want to let everyone know that we're, we found a lot of people talking about what's going on. And so I think public opinion about everything that's happening is going to make a difference, but we'll see. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, we may, we may not be able to spend as much time on each article as we usually do. <laughs> right. So the last shout out is actually my article that is about our topic. And I'm not going to say much about it. Just like that. This this is kind of what's spearheading this episode. Uh, my yeah. article is called This Country is Screwed. Have fun. Go read it. Um, I'm going to move on to... Uh, to the main part of the show because I don't want to I don't want to like reveal a lot about that because yeah. we're going to sure. talk about it but shout out to the accidental monster our friend and yours such a great writer go check out the article Thanks. I just had to just had to because <laughs> you, you bet you're awesome okay let's get into it all right so the very first one is by Dan Cannon called with fear for our democracy yeah this was the one that was about um, uh, the justice, was it Sonia Sotomayor? Something like that? I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Um, I it's in don't the... remember. I'm looking at it on a different screen, but I don't. Yeah, Sotomayor. Yeah, I don't exactly know. I don't know oh, if that's how it's pronounced. Sotomayor? Sotomayor? I don't know. Sotomayor? Sotomayor? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce things. Especially anyway, the point, you know. the point is this: this goes more into um, the dissent, like basically her saying, "No, this is this is wrong," and and her like pointing out from a democratic standpoint why it's wrong, and calling to the rest of people to to act on it. Right. And it's such a huge deal that a justice officially decided, I need to say this out loud publicly to everyone, and went ahead and did it, that it doesn't happen very often. So it's a, it's a really good article. It, it puts a, a lot of um, a big spotlight on Sonia Sotomayor, and um, I think it's great. I don't really know a whole lot about this part of our government like i'm not well versed in all of the intricacies and everything to know how important she is or what she's done or any of that stuff but this article does goes a long way to help me understand her as a person and you know where she tends to stand as a platform but the reason why they titled it with fear for our democracy was because those were five words that she specifically had said and the article points out how like that 
that's not something that the people that are in our government in those higher positions really ever say they don't usually even say that like there's a threat to our democracy except in i think he he pointed out like two different cases that 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 was mentioned so yeah. like or maybe it's just justices that have have said that sort of thing so this this kind of is a, a red flag situation and he kind of like goes through of why this makes sense i don't i don't know i don't, yeah. I don't know where and, i'm going with that <laughs> well i think it's i just think it's great because like you know i i, I can't I can't super imagine what it was like to be her to decide that I need to make a public statement like this, but it takes a lot of courage to, to think anybody's going to listen to anything anyone has to say. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you come out and publicly say something and someone else, even if that person doesn't get an enormous amount of traction with it says, I'm so glad you said that, you know what I mean? Even that alone is great. But like, you know, this is just pointing out how powerful that statement was. And right. I, I, I think it's great. It's humans supporting humans, and that makes me happy. Right. Because I'll take anything right now, honestly. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Is that is that gif of uh, the justice that you did, Sturge? I'm just curious. This last one. Um, yeah. Awesome. Oh, nice. Cool. So Thank you, a, Sturge. We have an image of her. I, I didn't know what she looked like either. So. That's, no, I had no idea. Good. Yeah. And that looks like that's a, a, a real quote. So who knows if it really is or not, but we'll see. That's great. Thank you, Sturge. Appreciate that that addition. Um, well, anyway, I'm ready to move on. We have a lot of articles to get through today. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next one is called It's Worse Than You Think. And again, it's not about Trump. And Oh, this one. Yeah. This one. And it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that we put this one to at the beginning kind of because technically this article is I believe written from a standpoint if, if he's not just barely right of center then he at least is so centrist that he understands both sides and so well, it's makes... not a left-leaning perspective right uh in the article it's a very long article and it's impassioned and I love it um and in it uh he expresses that he at least knows several people that are on the right and he um you know cares about them and they're part of his people family members and, and close friends kind of know not like joe down the street or the cashier that he talked with so like these are people that he cares about their opinions and doesn't want to argue excessively with them so he tries to meet them halfway that perspective is I think right now it is hugely important. Yeah, absolutely. And I th and the people that are trying to to gain uh, common ground between the two parties right now, I think are heroes. Um, oh, that's good to know. That uh, is good to know, back. Ben. Welcome back, Ben. Thanks for thanks so for checking. So Ben is out. tracking the current um, interview that Biden is having. It is an interview, right? Or is it's it a, something else? Is it a debate? Did you say it was a, did you say it was a State of the Union? <laughs> <laughs> like what is it? I o't... Oh, it's a press conference. Oh, okay. it's a press conference. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently okay. he's doing well right now, so that's good to know because he has not been necessarily doing all that great. Yeah, he's been struggling. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to get too heavily into it too much in this episode because this is about the Supreme Court decision. But as I kind of stated, I think already, they're very closely interwoven right now. Yeah. So um, back to the article by Robert W. Ahrens. I hope that's Ahrens how it's, or Aarons. Yeah. I hope that's how it's pronounced. Um, one of the things that he says in here, I'm going to say it verbatim. He says, so let's be even more clear. This isn't about Trump. It isn't about Biden either. It's about American democracy, which is clearly under threat. And he goes into what that means from a centrist view, not from the view of a lefty not from the view of the right but from a very like it, he does bring in like both perspectives and says yeah. you know we can speak to this part of of right thinking but also like there's a little bit of i, I don't know it i i'm not super 
familiar with people that are coming from this perspective. And I think we need to see more of this kind of, I don't know, viewpoint, I think. Yeah, absolutely. But I was really happy that he wrote it. I thought it was a great article to read. It had a lot of him in it. He was very um, vulnerable through it. He expressed how he felt about a lot of stuff in there. And you could just tell he's just trying his best. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think he touched on um, something that you and I have talked about in private where, like, we know, we don't know a lot of them, but we know that there are Republicans that have been watching this go down for the past, like, 10 years and have just, they're, they're just out of their minds with what to do because they want, they, they believe in the Republican beliefs. Ideology. The ideology, yeah. but they, but what's happening, what's been happening has not been the Republican ideology. So, like, where do they put their trust? Where do they put their vote? They have no idea. So they just stay out of the race because they have no idea where to actually go to because they can't come to the left because that's not the ideology that they align with. But the right has gone so far out there. And I, I feel like Robert kind of digs into that same perspective of, like, there are people out there... And he was trying to like reach those people to be like, look, this isn't what we wanted. And you know this. Wake up. <laughs> exactly. Um, I sort of have the feeling that the that the conservative party, the, the Republican Party is going to split and at some point and be maybe maybe they'll keep the Trumps. The Trumps will keep the GOP because I think that they like initials. And then maybe there'll be like a, a new Republican Party that comes out with people that are a little more centrist. Well, not far right, not like, you know, recreating um, uh, fascism far right, you know? Right. And I think Sturge has it right. Like the GOP is Trump or die at this point. They're, they're just like all the people that believe they were actually like firmly Republican maybe 30 years ago by the definition of Republican back then, now they're considered centrist or even left-leaning because yeah. the idea of Republican that Trump has brought into it has just gone so far out there. And and this this divine, this, uh, what, what was it called again? The immunity, the presidential immunity has really it's the red flag like it's not even a flag it's the it's the smoking bomb right exactly that it's the that. it's the irradiated crater <laughs> right right <clears throat> yep absolutely um yeah it was an impassioned article go check it out so then we Next. start getting into the meat and it's not like the other ones didn't talk about the ruling itself it they did but the reason why they appealed to us was not necessarily the issue itself, but their position, like their perspective of the issue, if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas this one starts to really just get into what we, I don't know, what we understand of and what we're worried about the issue itself. Yeah. Is this the one that was... Uh was angry is this the angry one um i think so this was the yeah. one that i found oh no 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 okay not the, not the one i was thinking of then okay well i mean okay. she gets pretty angry but maybe maybe not the the one that gets really emotional into it um because she's you know kind of uh author denise d denise diant diant dianati Dian, Dian, i don't know i my mouth stopped working. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Thanks, Sturge. Um, Die and Natty. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that could be correct. Who um, knows? And her article is called 21st Century Divine Right to Rule. And she's comparing this ruling, rightfully so, to the very monarchy that we were running away from that founded this country. And that it is absolutely ridiculous to believe that there is any part of the Constitution that would ever have allowed this 
sort of ruling. Right. And I think we're going to get into it a little bit more with this and some of the some of the other articles. But the absolute gall of the Supreme Court, I'm sorry, I'm getting into it. Tell me to stop if you want to, to try and rule on the abortion issue, saying that there was no clear intent in the founding document to be able to say that the founding fathers wanted abortion to be a right granted to Americans to then say that it is okay for the president to have immunity, that someone is above the law, so clearly goes against that document and the the writers. If you could talk to them today and say it, every single one of them, I'm sorry, I just got really Why are you sorry? No, this is what it's about. Like, that's, yeah. And I had forgotten, this is is the one where she even goes into... um... The, the founding father's perspectives in because they had, you were right they had used the you know constitution kind of thing against abortion but yeah. apparently benjamin franklin published a how-to guide for at-home abortions i didn't know that yeah and also i didn't know that either also abortion used to be legal until the quickening, which which was the mo- moment in the womb where the baby could be felt moving. That's mm-hmm. what they called the quickening. And so that, that would have been somewhere between 16 and 20 weeks. So technically, the Founding Fathers did actually believe in abortion being an American right. Otherwise, they would have codified that in the original document. Yeah, they may not have seen it as a, maybe it was a, a fringe thing at the time i have no idea but But you know um, what they did codify in the original document through a three uh what what do they call it a a triparte system was that no one should ever have absolute power and immunity that was absolutely a part literally the foundation of our entire government right checks and balances was the whole reason they decided to write Uh. down for how things needed to work they, that's it. Checks and balances. Keeping a king from rising to power. Because they were trying to escape a king. Yeah. At the time that was oppressing them. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were they were rich white folks with slaves, so I don't know how oppressed they were at the time, well, but still. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this this also this article was really good. I really appreciated her perspective on this. Yeah, and and the information I like I didn't know all that stuff. That was some really useful information. Mm-hmm. So then we have Scotus crowns Trump as king by Karen White. Karen but with a where... C, by the way. Karen with a C, and the the subtitle is "But where in the Constitution does it say that he has immunity?" and this is the one I was thinking of when I was thinking yeah, about the Yeah, this article. is the one that gets emotional. Yeah, where well, there's actually a. Emo- oh, I don't want to reveal it. Never mind. Get edged. Anyway. Um, you, you don't want to. Say, I mean, I have the part. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, that's she, yeah. It's so exciting. It it builds up to this and it it, it goes even further afterwards. But the, there's this one line that that really shows like where we're going to and she says show me where in the historical record it says that the farmers or the framers of the constitution thought that a president should be above the law show me Uh it right exactly that's the emotion yeah that that's so vulnerable to me you know that's someone really expressing what their emotion really is and uh i was blown away um wasn't this also the one Maybe I'm wrong, but wasn't this also the one that uh, mentioned about, like, the um, very tiny upside at the very end of the article? No, the have... upside. We only have one upside. Oh, no, the... that's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. There is a tiny yeah. little upside in this one. Um, there is a case that Judge Tanya Chutkin is going to be trying where... Mm-hmm. Some charges um, that special counsel Jack Smith is bringing that maybe acts that are technic that that could be considered immune under this law. However, they have to still be addressed in the court and therefore all of his evidence and all of his witnesses are still going to be a part of that case, even if 
their new ruling says that that the president is immune that doesn't mean that we are in the dark about it right and we We will be able to see all of trump's treachery laid out before us right the evidence has to come out and i i hope that that's the case and i hope it does i hope everyone gets to see it because I think a lot of people are going to dismiss that as being a, a, something that doesn't really matter too much because it's just evidence of past crimes. But I think when people see it, people will react. Maybe not all people. There are definitely going to be some people that it doesn't matter. Like they, he could do anything and it wouldn't change their opinion. Yes. However, I think there are still people that don't understand the extent of Trump's treachery. And when they start seeing all the things that he's actually done, I think some of those loyal followers will start to realize, oh, actually, he's not that great of a person. And maybe I made a mistake. Right. And I think it's important for us to be open to people that that do change their mind like that and to be like, look, dude, I don't understand how you liked him, but I understand being feeling tricked. I understand how easy it is for us all to end up in a situation where we're tricked by somebody and it's okay. It's okay to change your mind. I'm going to think that they're freaking heroes because you know, it, it, the, the way the world is right now, like everybody feels like they have to double down and fight uh, to support their own opinion. Even if they find out it's wrong they still have to support it because they can't be seen as being wrong. They'll be embarrassed to look like a fool. And we're not allowed to do that in this day and age. And as someone that has been seen as a fool probably daily for decades, it ain't that bad, folks. It's sometimes fun to be foolish and okay. (laughs) So if you do find the strength of will within you to be able to change your mind and realize that maybe I made a mistake, maybe the person that I thought he was isn't accurate, and now that I know who he is, I'm going to change my mind, that's a hero. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, Ben. Uh huh. Absolutely. Welcome back, Ben. Good to see you again, buddy. <laughs> did did I say AIDS? I don't know. I might have said AIDS. It's possible. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have anything to say about AIDS, so probably not. First thing I hear mortal go AIDS. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> well, it happens. Yeah. So then we go from all of those articles, which obviously they go way more in depth about this ruling than we're really going through in this episode because I don't uh, we could go through a lot of the nitty-gritty but trust me when I say there's a lot to go through I and, just uh, don't want to make the episode that long and 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 truthfully like I feel drained talking about this already as far as we have you know I don't want to stop or anything now we, we have we're, we're probably barely 25 minutes into the episode but like I think the topic is just heavy yeah you know it is and so you know we're only going to be able to talk about it for as long as we can and I still think that everyone that's writing about it out there that's putting out their opinions and saying what it is that they think is amazing I might do a shout not a, not a real shout out but I might mention an article I read today at the end of this but let's go through our articles first like be- before we finish you know go to the next one I, I do want to build on that and say anybody who is considering writing about this do it write about it because i mean maybe it doesn't do anything sure but like this might be the last moment that we have freedom of speech for all we know right it so could be. do it now and see if it does any good because maybe it'll convince one person maybe and everybody that can convince one person, you know, it could be enough. That's all I'm saying. Could be. Mm-hmm. All hands yes. on deck, you know? Exactly. All hands on deck. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Now... Wait, 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 wait. I can do it. I can do better. I can do better. All hands on. Oh. <laughs> I was a little off. Timing. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, Sturge is going to make a story titled i will become president so i can love uh, you for disagreeing with me i look forward to that humor piece i look forward to that also um so the next one is actually a humor piece it's called it is. 10 things biden can do now that he has immunity the supreme court opens a pandora's box by charles bestiel 
and it, I don't it doesn't actually like technically present itself as a, a com a humor piece but it it does go into some pretty funny um, possibilities that are also absurd but also possible they're not too absurd as to be possible now under this new ruling yeah and uh, Sturge is apparently a fan of Charles and says that it, it is humor or at least from his perspective so you know <clears throat> It's probably good that we found the humor in it, but yeah, it's it's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and it it, it go ahead. Well, um he what one of the things that he does kind of um point out in his listicle, which he hates the fact that he did a listicle, but he pointed out that like a lot of the things that he's suggesting are now possible, they don't technically kill huh? people. But they don't mm. not Oh. people <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we didn't like every line on the list we didn't necessarily resonate with yeah. um some of the stuff was kind of niched if, from my perspective but like the first three points on that list were um four points i don't remember the three first or four three points on that list were were spot on yeah. and you know it's playing with the idea that like as soon as i was told because I had to be told, I didn't look this up on my own to find out the, about the Supreme Court decision in the first place. As soon as I was told about it, that the president has ultimate immunity, I'm like, what idiot decided that? Because that just allows the current president to take advantage of it in the way that the person you did that for would want to. Like, Biden could order SEAL Team 6 to huh? Trump just like people have been talking about if Trump gets this kind of power, he could have the power to order seal team six to uh, uh. his political rivals. And I, I just don't get it. Like it's like they don't follow logic anyway. So side I, note. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know somebody who was a seal. Um, oh yeah, you do. Yeah. And when I mentioned that and called it seal team six, he got really like comically heated about how, that's not actually what they're called. They haven't been called that since the 80s. <laughs> I don't well, remember what the actual name is because he was saying it so fast and, and, and he was very passionate about SEAL Team 6 is not the right name. And so if you're calling it that, he's already stopped listening to you because you don't know what you're talking about. But I just thought it was hilarious to bring up here. <laughs> Yeah, and I like Sturge's Steel Team, Seal Team Six that we got going on. So yeah, it's only, just it's only three. Know, it's only three. Uh, they're all m m powerful enough for two seals. Oh, oh now he's got four. He's the he's, best he's trying to find all. enough. He's trying to find him. He's he's gathering the team. <laughs> um, so yeah, <laughs> Seal Team Six is not a thing, but people are saying it because it's colloquially a colloquial. I can never say that word. Colloquial. Colloquialism? Colloquially a word. It's a phrase. People understand what you mean when you say that. Okay, so the last three seals are technically the same? Well, this last, last well, one. I guess the last, last one is. It's a bit of a hybrid, a at bit least. Of a hybrid. <laughs> Come check us out live. Clone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, Charles. Bastille had a great a great humor article of like what he calls the soft list of the things that the president can now do and they're hilarious I don't agree with all of them but check them out because at least it's it's a nice little giggle over the situation right there's gonna be people out there that say you shouldn't have humor you shouldn't be able to make jokes about certain things and I still to this day even though it offends some people I think that you have to be able to find humor in everything. I think being able to laugh, even in the most hopeless of situations, is key. Because otherwise, it's going to weigh too much on you and you will get too depressed to be able to continue to work towards something changing. Right. And exactly. a lot of this situation has felt virtually hopeless because there's not a lot that we the people can do. But that, that's not, I mean, it, it, there isn't a lot we can do except for, you know, maybe voting on things, voting more. 
But that doesn't mean that there's not hope. And that is why we have one last article. And that one last is article. House Democrats are taking on the Supreme Court, also by Karen White. I didn't realize that two of your articles were by the same person. That's interesting. I didn't either. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. We read both of them, and neither one of us realized that they were the same author. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. That, 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 there's a whole um, evolution there that I wasn't even aware of. But that's cool. Okay. But yeah, this one was great too. I just loved the the fact that they were that she was pointing out what's going on here. Go ahead, you're gonna say something. No, I I just was gonna explain the article because like it feels when when we hear that the Supreme Court made this ruling giving power to the president, we like it's it's easy to feel like the whole system is just uh. like it's just fallen apart and is gonna be just awful. There's nothing we can do. It's gonna decay into madness but here's karen white coming to us and being like no we have a three-part system and that third part nobody ever thinks about because they don't do anything uh -huh. are are doing something in fact it is their job to do this this is literally right. what the house is for well it's what the uh, congress, congress is for the senate and the house together right and we currently have, and, and you know, it goes through the fact that you know there is a bit of a conservative lean at the particular this particular moment moment in the house, and so who knows what the success of this is going to be. But once we get that evidence that was mentioned before laid out in front of us to show us what's going on, maybe people, and I'm, people are going to give me shit for this, but maybe people are going to do the right thing. Maybe, maybe people will just do the right thing. Yeah. And so there are people right now that are in the House of Representatives working tirelessly to file impeachment charges to get some of those Supreme Court justices taken off of their taken their power away because they they're single handed. They're like they're trying to disrupt the entire stability of our government. And there are also people that are working to make a new amendment to prevent this ever happening again. It wasn't something anybody thought we needed to do because it was so obvious that this is not the way the Constitution reads. But, you know, since we have to do it, we'll make another amendment just to make sure to drive it home. Yeah. And honestly, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. This is like what the boomers always complain about. Like, there's no common sense anymore. And it's like, yeah. People decide to go against common sense and act in a stubborn manner and go in a way that they feel like they can do their own thing, get away with whoever they want, and then we have to make rules to tell people how it's supposed to be. And that means we're going to tell that like every common sense thing that people should be able to know, we got to make it a rule. Yep. Because yep. because 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 a few people just couldn't handle it. And this one, if, if, if you don't read any of the other ones, this one's probably the best one, I think, to walk away from because it, it reminds us that there's still hope. Right. That there's still people trying. And, and that we, and that, you know, even the forefathers of the country, like, they had this, they had this in, in their mind. This is why we have a three-part system. So that even if two of them are on the same side, that third one is the one that is tasked with keeping everything in balance. Right. I mean, at this point, this is the Supreme Court, one branch. This is the, the highest court of the judicial branch of the government, allowing the highest seat in the executive branch of the government un, unlimited power in a certain regard. And so the third branch our Congress, our lawmakers have no other choice but to step in and try and stop it. And I'm glad that some of them are, are answering that call. I hope that more of them step up and do so. And honestly, I don't think that this will actually happen, but it has reinvigorated my desire to potentially, you know, run for public office. <laughs> because what am I supposed to... Because there's so many quotes out there about... Um, you know, evil men do evil things, but the worst evil is is uh, the good person. 
that does that does nothing. You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, and from, so, from uh, Boondock Saints. Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. And many other places, I'm sure. And um, I I I just don't know what else I could possibly do to help out the situation except for try and do the best I can because I know that I would want to do the right thing the whole time. There could be somebody that offers me ten billion dollars to do whatever dumb bullshit that they want to do that's illegal, and I'm not going to care that they're offering me that, that money because it's not the right thing to do. My self-hatred has prepared me <laughs> uniquely <laughs> to actually do the right thing when it needs to happen. And that is true. that's what we need. And you're very good at denying yourself any luxuries or benefits. <laughs> yeah, because I don't give a fuck. Oh. Like, it doesn't matter to me if um, I get taken advantage of in certain ways. Who cares? I'll be fine. I'll just keep going on and living my life as I got to live my life. This world sucks for a lot of people, so there's no reason for me to just whine and talk oh. about stuff. Whatever. But, like, you know, I don't, I don't, need, I don't need your money. I, I, I just want to do the right thing. And if no one else is going to, I don't know what else to do but to step up and try myself. So... It's an idea that I've had. I don't think it'll amount to anything. I've had a billion ideas. But one of my ideas, I just recently started doing, and I really liked it. So maybe this will be another one that I do. Well, I who don't knows? think enough people know who you are yet. Huh? Or, whoops. Do you want me to cut that ah! out? <laughs> nah, it's fine. Whatever. Um, people um, don't really know who you are, so they're not going to write you into the ballot. But, you know... I think if you work hard to let people know who you are, I think you you might have a shot, just as much of a shot as anybody else. Maybe I'm more, sure why not. probably. We'll see. I don't know. It's a lot of energy, a lot of social stuff. I have anxiety issues, so it's certainly like, you know, I, I understand if people don't have confidence in that sort of thing. I certainly would be worried that I might, in the wrong moment, worry that I'm going to make everything terrible and then shut down. Like, it's a possibility, so... Wow, a little vulnerable. Sorry, I didn't mean to get that deep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, check out our last uh, our last article, by also by Karen White. Um, got a little bit of hope in there, showing us that you can have a little bit of hope in humanity because some people will try and do the right thing. Yep. Oh, what an episode, Tam. What yeah, episode. it's a heavy, it's a heavy discussion, a heavy topic. It really is. I'm glad we did it though. We don't we don't usually do the political sphere, but this this seemed like one that like I don't know, man. If if there was a time for us to weigh in, this is it. Yeah, absolutely. And we don't have a powerful platform. There's nothing that we can do from anything from our platform. But since we have a platform at all, I think it's important to speak about this, at least some of the stuff that happens in the world. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Can't talk about all of it because then we wouldn't talk about anything else. And <laughs> right. I, I really like finding and showcasing some good oh. writing and art, you know, that makes me happy. Yeah. And, you know, when my when my grandpa was alive, one of the things that I really respected about him was that he only spoke on issues that like mattered, like really, really mattered. Not that the little things didn't matter at all, but like when he spoke, you knew that it really mattered. And so I kind of want to take that that same feel, uh, that same approach here to where, like, we don't talk about political stuff on average so that when we do, people know that that's the stuff that really matters. Y you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of choosing Tough, our battles. Least. Yeah, matters to us at least. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've well. bored everybody. <laughs> No, no, no. You mentioned Grandpa. I think that's where... Um, ah, I see, I see. That's where the two, those two came from. I don't get the blonde dude from The Office reference, though. Dwight? Yeah. Because he's saying that's politics, baby. Oh, I didn't... I couldn't read that second yeah. word. I, I literally thought it said police. <laughs> so I want to thank both Ben Ulancey and Gerald Sturgill. I want to thank them both for being part of the live recording. And you, dear listener, can be a part of the live action by joining our Discord through themonsteralley.com, which also has links to our articles, Spotify, and Substack. And special bonus, Substack is the only place to get the oh. uncensored version. You're I still smiling thank... at that. 
I do. <laughs> it's just <laughs> fun. It's just fun to say. Anyway, um, thank you, dear listener, for coming along and listening to us talk about this very deep and heavy issue. Um, I do want to personally, like, kind of uh, ask anyone that's listening to do their part, even if that's just voting in November, if you're part of the American system. If you're not part of the American system, then, like, I don't know, do whatever you want. Write a blog about it. Um, but... You know, this is something to take action on. It really does matter to, I think, the whole world. And I've seen a lot of people all over the world saying it matters to the whole world. So, anyway, thank you for coming along. We really appreciate you. Um, I'm Eternally Mortal, and I hope you find smiles this day. And I'm the Accidental Monster. You can find us on Medium.com or through TheMonsterAlley.com. That's T-H-E-M-O-N-S-T-E-R-A-L-L-E-Y.com. And remember to follow yourself, always.